All processes which prepare the source signal for the transmission path are subsumed under the term modulation. In the case of a sign, three quantities can be varied amplitude, frequency and phase. Accordingly, it is possible to superimpose information on a sinusoidal carrier by means of a change in the amplitude, frequency or phase or by a combination of these three quantities. AM, FM and PM are used to displace or transfer the source signal into the desired frequency range. Therefore, all modulation processes represent nonlinear processes because the modulated signals occupy a different frequency range from the source signal. According to the uncertainty principle, an amplitude, frequency or phase change always imply frequency uncertainty. Thus, the sudden switching of the frequency of a sign in the time domain implies frequency uncertainty in the frequency domain, which is expressed in a frequency band. In classical modulation processes, only one of the three quantities, amplitude, frequency or phase, is varied continuously in the rhythm of the source signal. The classical modulation processes are thus Amplitude modulation, AM Frequency modulation, FM and Phase modulation, PM In traditional transmission technology, for example radio and television, AM and FM are mainly used. Here you see a realistic representation of a traditional AM signal. Only by using a very rapid storage oscilloscope is it possible to represent a real AM signal in a qualitatively similar way. Here it is simulated by means of DAISY Lab. At the top you see a language like low frequency LF signal generated by filtered noise. Below this you see the AM signal. The LF signal is contained in it as the envelope of the signal. In the frequency domain line you see on the left the frequency domain of the LF signal, on the right that of the AM signal. It is striking that the LF signal appears double at the carrier frequency, mirrored symmetrically. It is said that the LF spectrum is convoluted at the carrier frequency. This convolution is a result of a multiplication in the time domain. Traditionally, the right sideband is referred to as the upper sideband, and the left sideband as a lower sideband. From our knowledge of the symmetry principle, this term is misleading, as in the reality the LF signal is symmetrical to the frequency 0 Hz. The mirror image half of the negative frequency domain is also part of the LF frequency domain. The multiplication of a signal in the time domain by a sinusoidal carrier, which means the AM, is the simplest method of displacing the frequency domain of a signal to any position desired. In the frequency domain, this offset corresponds to the sinusoidal carrier, which is dominant in the spectrum. The main part of the energy of the AM signal is accounted for by the carrier 
and not the information bearing part of the AM signal. The information of the source signal seems to be present twice over, once in the upper sideband and once in the lower sideband. As a result, the frequency domain is unnecessarily large. We shall therefore first try to generate and demodulate a double sideband AM signal without a carrier in the spectrum. As examples of source signals, we select at the top a sign and at the bottom a realistic signal curve with an upper limiting frequency. In order to carry out this demodulation in the traditional way, both source signals must be completely in the positive region. As a result, the envelope of the AM signals represents a source signal. Daisy Lab simulates here with absolute value process the result of the rectification with diodes. The two source signals are retrieved by subsequent low pass filtering which is a sliding average value in the time domain. These signals are slightly time displaced compared with the original signal because all signal processing takes time. By means of this absolute value process carried out in the time domain we obtain in the frequency domain an AM signal with twice the carrier frequency and a second one with a difference frequency of 0 Hz. That means the original source signal. What remains is to filter out the AM signal with twice the carrier frequency by means of a low pass filter and the demodulation is complete. A filtered noise signal serves as a source signal. This source signal has no offset here and lies symmetrically to the zero axis. In the second series the multiplication of this source signal by the carrier frequency results in the double sideband AM signal without carrier. Demodulation takes place in the receiver by multiplication of this carrierless AM signal with a sign of carrier frequency. As a result of the multiplication we obtain the sum frequencies and the difference frequencies. This signal in the third series shows the sum frequencies and the difference frequencies of the AM signal and the carrier frequency. If this AM signal is filtered out by means of a low pass filter, we obtain the retrieved time displaced source signal in the lower series. Double sideband AM means double information. Now the case of single sideband AM is demonstrated. At first the source signal, first series, is amplitude modulated by simple carrier multiplication. As the source signal has no offset a double sideband AM signal without a carrier results. By means of a high precision bandpass signal in the black box, the upper sideband, the regular position, is filtered out 
in the third series. We thus obtain a one sideband AM signal. In the receiver, this is multiplied by the carrier for demodulation. As before, we obtain the sum of two signals, see the frequency domain in the fourth series, the source signal and the one sideband AM signal at the double carrier frequency or mid frequency. Note that both bands have the same amplitude level. If the upper band is filtered by a low pass filter, we obtain the retrieved source signal in the lower series. Over 10,000 telephone channels can be transmitted simultaneously by means of a coaxial cable by traditional analog communication technology. Small groups and bigger groups, consisting of several smaller groups, etc., are formed by frequency staggering. Here the pre-grouping of three telephone channels in the range of 12 to 24 kilohertz in the time and frequency domain is illustrated realistically for the first time. The smallest group is a so-called pre-group. Three telephone channels are grouped to form a pre-group which always occupies the range of 12 to 24 kilohertz. This example illustrates the frequency conversion, processing and staggering of the channels. In the case of AM and single sideband modulation, multiplication is a central signaling process. Frequency bands can be moved around in the spectrum at will. It should be noted that in the case of multiplication we have always a sum and a difference frequency. That means at least two frequency bands arise which are accompanied by a doubling of information. The upper side bands are filtered out by an LP filter and so we retrieve the source signal in the receiver. Because transmission and processing need time, there is a small delay between the source signal in transmitter and receiver. The real problem with the single sideband modulation are the high precision band passes which are required to filter out one of the adjacent sidebands. Apart from the amplitude, frequency and phase also offer the possibility of changing frequency or phase in the rhythm of the source signal. Using the example of a periodic sawtooth signal as a source signal, the function of the generator module at the voltage controlled oscillator or FM generator is shown here. In the experiment corresponding to this diagram the instantaneous frequency can be measured by means of the cursor. The result is the level of the instantaneous frequency corresponds exactly with the instantaneous value of the sawtooth. On the left, we see the value of the instantaneous frequency in Hertz. In the top series, the FM signal has a hardly discernible frequency swing, and in the bottom series, it has a very large frequency swing. The frequency swing is equivalent to the largest deviation of the instantaneous frequency of the FM signal from the mid frequency.
here 500 Hz. The greater the frequency swing, the greater the bandwidth of the FM signal. The source signal is sinusoidal in all cases. The better a change can be seen in the time domain of the instantaneous frequency, the wider the total spectrum of the FM signal. A rule for the curve of the amplitude of the FM spectrum cannot be derived. For FM demodulation we need a frequency to voltage converter, but it must be extremely sensitive because the frequency swing is only extremely small compared with the absolute value of the FM center frequency. Physics seems to be relevant here. Filters are the first hint. Filters have an edge at the boundary between the conducting state region and the blocking state region. Let us assume that this edge is rather steep. Therefore, a small change in frequency decides if the signal is more or less allowed to pass. That means that the amplitude varies slightly. Thus, the filter edge is a domain which reacts very sensitively to frequency changes. At the output of the filter, the amplitude varies in the rhythm of the source signal. It seems to be AM modulated. Thus we can take the same AM demodulation processes for retrieving the source signal, rectifying and LP filtering. But the edge of a filter curve is rather non-linear. In the past the FM demodulation based on this principle caused calibration problems. So a new approach to this problem was needed.